What's up, everybody? Welcome back to This Disc is Great with Steve and Nate. Um, speaking of disc member, we have the raffle coming up for the month of June on Friday. So two days from now, we'll be drawing for the disc member raffle, which if you don't know what that is, um, every month we ship out a whole bunch of disc golf discs, ultimate products, all sorts of cool stuff um, for $24.99 a month. Um, you get some sweet limited edition stuff straight to your door. Um, so check out dismember.com that if you are a disc member, you are eligible for a raffle of over a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Um, research what we got this month, pop that up there. Mm -hmm. um, FASA is sponsoring the raffle um, and we have a really, really sweet custom FASA bag that's one of a kind. It's red with a di white disc member logo and a white disc store logo across the top. Um, so one of a kind FASA bag. Uh, we got some, some baskets, some discs, some polos, another bag, some shorts, all sorts of cool stuff from Innova, DD, Fossa, and us. So check that out. That will be Friday at 4 o'clock. Steve, how do they get into that raffle? You've got to go to social media. You've got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You've got a hashtag disc member, and uh, make sure to get us tagged in it as disc, at disc store. So that's all it takes, and you've got a chance to win super cool stuff yep again um, you can do that on Facebook Instagram and Twitter one entry per per place and then make sure that disk store turns blue because that's how we search for it so if you don't tag us properly which I know mobile is sometimes finicky about that um, you won't get any drawings so make sure you do that um, all right anyway like I said this is this disc is great with Steve and Nate the weekly show where we review new disc golf discs we take uh, new releases, throw them a bunch of times, film them, edit in some cool flight lines so you can see what it flies like. And we can, uh, we can sound like we know what we're talking about when people ask us about discs. So uh, this week, what do we have, Steve? Latitude 64 has created a disc that has the outer edge room. This is the fourth mm -hmm. that they put out. So this it. is the, well, they have there a, was a three in the Zion. That's right, so this, so this is number five, and they finally got the mid-range out, where, uh, and that actually has some overstability. This is the Fuji. So we've got the burst ones that were in store only. We've got the Opto, the, the Opto G. Opto G. So it's got Opto plastic in the middle, gold plastic on the outside. And then we've got some limited edition ones from the Skelefta, Skelefta Open in Europe, and the European Open um, on the website. These are cool because they're gold burst in the center and opto around the rim. So that's the first time they've done opto rims on these. So researchers have already posted the link. You can go check out the Fujis on the website. Um, also, we give away stuff on the show, so we're going to give away those two discs that we threw for the review. I'm also going to give away one of our America stamps. That... Oh no! Maybe yes, sir. Uh, right, right there. Hey, we're okay, back. We're back. Right, we're back. Uh, okay. Cool. Drop for a cool. So I'm going to give away one of our America discs. These are limited releases that we just put up on the website yesterday. Um, these are on sale. Um, you get a free disc store towel with one of these when you buy them. I have Lucid Ballista Pros. I have Lucid uh, Opto Ballista Pros, Lucid Mavericks, and Origio Burst Hearts. Um, these are sweet, some new molds, that, and a, a popular mold, and two new molds. Um, all flag stamps, they're sweet, they're on sale for this week only with that free towel. Um, I'm going to give one of these away to you guys, so comment Ballista Pro, Maverick, or Harp, and we will randomly select someone to win that particular disc. Alright, so, um, like we said, this week we've got the Latitude 64 Fuji. Um, we're also going to give away the burst one to whoever guesses the longest throw. So we're going to do um, Steve or Nate, and then how far you think the farthest backhand went, and you will possibly win this Fuji. Um, so the other one, just go to the cool comment, funny question, 
Um, anything that we decide is worth getting a free disc. Um, but yeah, so this is episode 55 of This Disc is Great with Steve and Nate. Um, Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Fuji from Latitude. All right. <clears throat> Fuji has a flight rating of 4402. That's uh, just, just a little faster than putter, but not as much glide as we would think came from one of these. But rise to the top with the Fuji. Overstable, predictable, and made to handle power. Fuji is a trustworthy straight flyer with a consistent hyzer fade at the end, even when the wind blows. Fuji has a slightly more shallow grip compared to traditional mid-ranges. So that's where you're going to see why it's a 4 rating and not a 5, like your average mid-range is. Um, this has a really nice feel, though. Like, like I said, with a, pretty much every disc that has an overmold, you can't tell. This yeah. I mean, unless you sit there and mess with it in your hand while you're gonna throw, there's there's no way you're feeling that unless you have like Princess in the P hands kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my grip, I'm not touching that overmold no. in any way, shape, or form, so it's not a problem for me. Um, I don't even, yeah, I don't notice them when I throw. Um, whether or not it gives you any sort of added gyro effect, I don't know. Um, but anyway. So, Steve, what kind of disc does the 4402 kind of remind you of? Yeah, uh, instantly, if I just add a speed in the glide, that's an Emac Truth, mm -hmm. or that's an MD3. Uh, even our Gateway Prophecy is pretty similar, is yeah. Pretty, basically spot on. Um, what was, there was one other... Uh, that's over. the same numbers as an old school rock. Yeah. So, um... So the, your typical go-to go mid-range is not super overstable like a Justice that's, or a Zone where it's going to be crashing out on you. It's not flippy. It's just going to be pretty dead straight. Um, so yeah, let's let's see if it flies true to that. <clears throat> Put it on a nice big hyzer. Got it nice and high in the air. So 316, that's some pretty decent glide for a mid. I mean, I'm throwing my verdicts anywhere else to like 320, 330 at most. Um, so 316 on a hyzer is, um, I did have some nice wind pushing me there. But uh, that's that's a really solid shot. And I'll, that just kind of held that straight hyzer line, didn't flip up out of it. So kind of what you want for your, your mid-range hyzer shot there. Let's go ahead and get on to the next one. Now when I'm going for a hyzer, I expect that disc to fade out. So I'm not afraid to rip on it and expect a little turn, but I need that disc to fade back for me. That's exactly what this disc was doing. It's a great, great feeling. Again, having a 300, 280, maybe a little more kind of shot where you know it's gonna fade out, but it's not dumping. So really sweet, really sweet. Yeah, you did get a little flip up out of that one for sure, but did have that reliable fade at the end. Nate trying to throw it really high. <laughs> so again, that's just on a little bit of hyzer. That's kind of my natural release point for most discs unless I'm trying to flex something and throwing it with that little bit of hyzer. That popped up to flat and just kind of held that for a really long time, dropped out and faded at the end. Again, 315, that's everything I want out of a mid-range and more. So dead straight with that solid fade at the end, that's going to be your go-to workhorse mid-range. <clears throat> that probably was a little more rounded than I usually like to throw, but I really ripped on it. So getting it to pop up but still fade. This is this is a consistent flight pattern we've seen out of both of these, and the mm -hmm. uh, even the special edition one does tend to be a little more understable comparatively. But I'd say it was, but not as much as some of the other discs. Exactly. Had. There's there's certain ones we've really been like, oh, really put some hyzer on this one, man, when you throw it. But uh, just really consistent. Like, not a whole lot of variation between the molds, as you can see. Yep. So this is on a flat release. So flat and hard. It turned just a little bit, but is mostly going straight and still faded out. Um, so it, it was popping up to flat from hyzer. So I was a little worried that when we threw it flat, it was going to just turn over on me. But nope, just held that straight line, glided really well. 
Um, 339 again is just a, a bomb for a mid-range shot. Like anything farther than that, I'm pulling out a driver of some sort. So 339, dead straight. I mean, there's plenty of places I could use that shot. Crushing on a disc to get it to go that far from flat, you're just like, okay, I have to grab my... And straight, so my, like it's yeah. not flexing or turning, like it's just going dead straight. You're thinking you need something f super fast, but all of a sudden this guy, she, he's just going. And it's four-speed disc, just crushing. This one, I'm really trying to get on it. Uh, trying to get it to hold that ante. I didn't get the greatest rip on it, but it definitely came out. Uh, I did not, I, you know, that was just was a poor shot in reality, but that's a great way to look at not the greatest power going into a shot. It's still going to ante for a while, and it's going to have a nice kind of flat landing. Mm -hmm. And this one, I'm Rush. This one you actually got to get, uh, get a little pop. Really on. getting that ante line. You know, I don't have the biggest forehand, and I'm definitely not forehanding on a regular basis to 341. So that is how you do it, folks. That's how you get that forehand line with your backhand. Uh, that was super fun. I, I really liked how I could almost pick a spot. I, if if I could pick a spot, I would I would be able to hit that on probably. Five out of ten times, and for 340, uh, with five out of ten for the back end, the forehand would be one out of ten. So, you know, take your odds. Take yeah, your and chance. again, like you turn, got that turned over, and it, it held that line, yeah. but it still didn't dump and roll. It mm -hmm. still kind of faded out, landed softly at the end, which is what you want. Let's see how it handles the sidearm. So that makes a little more sense. I didn't see who threw this one when we reviewed it. I thought that was me. <laughs> You're like, how oh, could I? Uh, that's, so we've struggled forehanding mids in the past. Um, they, forehand has more off-axis torque than backhand does, and so sometimes it, it's easy to overpower mid-range. So you threw that on a, on a pretty good hyzer. With lots of height. With lots of height. Um, and it went fairly straight overall. If you need to go straight, now this had a little more power on it with a little bit of hyzer, um, so that definitely flipped up and turned, similar to your Annie shot. Um, but again, still faded out at the end. I didn't turn and burn it. Um, I can't like full rip on it, but you're not full ripping on a mid-range forehand shot anyway. Um, but I was able to give a good amount of power um, in 267 with a mid on a forehand. I'm not throwing any farther than that on a sidearm. Oh, just two sidearms. All right, cool. So uh, we we're looking at. 4402 on the Fuji. So, how do you feel about those numbers, Steve? I was fine. I'm, I think I'm all right with that. Uh, I didn't see any turn. It was the fact that it's a four speed disc and we just mm -hmm. threw it faster. But some of those shots, man, we really ripped on them. But I guess that, would, it, that would make the four it was make sense. It was popping to flat. Like, yeah. We were ripping on it and it was, like, it was popping to flat and it wasn't really turning. So if it had some turn, I think it would do more of that. Maybe that's the gyro um, effect. Maybe. It's um, just so even when we threw it flat, it just stayed flat. So like it liked the disc liked to get to flat, but then it kind of stayed there. Yeah. And I'd say the two fade is good because it did come out almost every time at the end um, with some solid fade. It's definitely not a 3.5 verdict type fade or a rock three type yeah. fade. Um, so I think those are pretty close. And I, the four glide I think is good because it, even though we were throwing it far. It did not feel as glidey as Emacs. Yeah, um, it did feel slower and it didn't feel as glidey. So I think that the I think the numbers are pretty spot on. Um, and honestly, I feel like it it threw like a less glidey Emac. That was kind of what I felt felt like it did. Um, when it's a little shorter than I feel like an Emac would, and kind of dropped out of the air a little faster. Um, so that's. You just don't like Emacs for because they're too glidier for some reason. Yeah. Then maybe this is a good option for you. Um, well, but they're, they're solid discs. They flew really well. We're hitting lots of lines. I mean, we could use these at Hummel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of excited to use one of these out at um, Arrowhead Stadium this week. That's the right. The Dynamic Disc Stadium experience. We're getting one of these guys. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. But yeah, solid disc. I think the comparisons we gave are pretty close. Um, we threw a lot of really consistent shots with it. It was pretty did what we wanted it to do, so it's a really, really solid disc. Uh, any other thoughts you want to give, Steve, before we uh, get into some, some questions and some giveaways? I think this is something that 
if you've played with anyone who likes to throw with some hyzer and they, they've just consistently been turning things over, I think this might be one that people might want to pick up. I, I, I thought it was an extremely consistent disc, uh, and it comes in some great plastics. True, true. Check them out. These are sweet. Going to the winner? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get the winner for the longest throw, which was Steve at 341. All right, our winner, again, we'll have to repeat this, our winner for, they got the closest with a 340 guess was Josh Wagner. Ooh, Josh Wagner at 340, and I was at 339, you were at 341, so he was right there on the button. Yep. So Josh Wagner wins the Burst Fuji. Good guess, Josh. Thanks for watching again. Um, all right, you got some uh, some questions over there for us. Got a couple questions here. Uh, again, make sure you comment Ballista Pro, Maverick, or Harp to win one of these guys. Um, Josh says, feel like a Waldo guessing on the distance. Wow, I'm pretty bad. <laughs> well, you got it. You got it right. So, but anyway, well, we got a question from Sean Pavel who wants to know what disc in your bag could you replace the Fuji with? That's in your bag, not just. Okay, so what disc in your bag would you replace the Fu what would you replace with the Fuji? Um, for me, the it would the best place for it to overlap with is it's going to take my beat up Lucid Verdict out. Um, it's not really a verdict anymore; it's kind of flippy um, as far as verdicts go. It flips the flat and goes really straight for me. It does the same kind of a shot that we are talking about um, with this guy. And that's probably the closest thing that I have. I. Just put it in the. I just put a Glow C Line MD3 in the bag about a month ago, and the, that's definitely going farther than the Fuji, but it's also fading out more. So if I needed something that was just, just stayed a little straighter longer, I would say. There's a few people saying Maverick, but isn't that that's a fairway? Right? Yeah, that's their guess. They're saying Maverick because that's how. If you're paying attention, that's how we're doing the giveaway. Oh, I didn't pay attention. I have headphones. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Well, we got a few people saying never. Did they win something? Uh, we'll we'll get there. Okay, you let me know. Uh, any other questions we wanna we wanna answer before we do that giveaway? Uh, uh, Jimmy Swenson has a question about uh, this member. Have we thought about doing like a yearly membership to this member or an upgraded subscription? Or what's we have, but for the first year at least, we wanted to keep it very simple and not make it too difficult on ourselves. Um, but a yearly purchase option is not a bad idea. We just have to figure out how to make it work um, with the system. Um, but that's uh, an idea we're bouncing around. Um, all right, so you keep looking for some questions. We're going to do another giveaway. Uh, Steve, give me a number one, two, or three. I like number two. Number two? All right, so that means we're giving away this Origio Burst Harp. So, Reeser, pick a random person who said Harp, and they win this disc. Oh, guess who said hard? My boy, Matthew Martzoff. Matthew. All right, Matthew Martzoff. You wanted a harp. We randomly selected the harp as the disc we're giving away, so this is yours. Um, all right, let's get some more questions here. we got to have a good one or a good comment to give away this Fuji, too. Donald Omar, wants to send this a giveaway for this month's disc number? Uh, no, you haven't. That is Friday. The giveaway for... Um, yeah, just a reminder, again, we are doing the raffle giveaway for disc member on um, Friday, and that has a couple of baskets from the disc store, a couple of bags from FASA, including a sweet custom one that is one of a kind. Uh, we got a couple of the Innova polos from last year. We got some disc golf shorts, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, but Don, you've already won two baskets, so you probably aren't going to win anything for a while. <laughs> Uh, Patrick Romero <laughs> wants to know, are you guys doing different color for your baskets? So we have three, we'll probably just do two. Uh, they're yellow, black, and red. So if we'll, the, I think it was yellow and black one in the picture, but if you ask real nicely for mm -hmm. the color you want, we can probably make that happen. we got a couple more questions here. Cool. Mark Hill asks, was the Fuji one of the next-gen player pack discs this year? You know, I haven't actually. Uh, so Mark asked if the Fuji was in the next-gen player pack. Um, I don't actually think I've looked at the next gen stuff for this year, so it might be, but I don't know. Okay. Sean Pavel wants to know do you guys like overmold discs? And do you bag any? Repeat that. Um, so Sean Pavel <laughs> asked if we like overmold discs and do we bag any. Um, do you still have a couple in the bag, Steve? I 
when the first set of the, the Sarek, the Bryce, and the Gobi came out, I instantly got all three. Uh, well, actually, I didn't get the Bryce. So I had Sarek and the Gobi. I ended up giving those to friends because I eventually started turning them over too much. Uh, but they were super great when I had them. Uh, and I do have an MVP disc in the bag. So that does have the overmold. And it throws just fine. Like I said, I don't really notice it while it's in my hand throwing. Um, but I do like the consistent glide that I'm getting. And I definitely am not having any kind of wobble that I've seen. Uh, even the flicks I had just mm -hmm. stopped wobbling faster. It was interesting. So I don't, um, I don't bag any overmold discs right now, um, but all the stuff we throw in for the show I've liked. Like I, again, I, we've said I don't notice the um, the overmold as far as like a grip thing. Um, I don't, you know, I've not really thrown enough and paid attention enough to know if the gyro effect from MVP is a real thing or not. But they all go far. I mean, I threw the Excite 456 last week or a couple weeks ago, so. Um, they go far, um, and I could easily swap them out with some stuff in my bag, but I don't currently bag any, but um, there's no, I don't see any reason not to throw them. Um, that was a good question, and you had, had some good discussion. So, Sean, you're going to win that pink Fuji. Um, we're going to get that out to you. Sean Pavel, I believe, mm -hmm. was who asked that. Yeah. Uh, Reese, you got a couple more questions before we get out of here. Sean Drew wants to know, when you guys uh, grip your discs to throw them, do you grab them in the same place every time? Sean asked if we grab the disc in the same exact place when we go and throw. When I'm throwing, I'm thinking about my target, my line, and then the angle of my disc. I'm not actually looking at my disc unless there's something on it. When I'm putting, there was a while that I tried to make it so the, uh, the stamp was straight up and down looking at me. But then after a while, the sun starts shining in your eyes. So you're just like, all right, well, let's just not think about what the disc looks like and focus on, on the target. So on the tee, I fiddle with my disc a lot. And so like I'm spinning it at my hand. And so like, I'm not thinking about where it is either. I'm not worried about that at all. I kind of spin it until my grip feels really good. And I just kind of hold it there. Um, so yeah, not, not worried about the way it faces. The only time I ever did that was I had a wizard that had like a disc in the stamp that was like right here so like my thumb fit in it so like i did that with that wizard while i was putting with it but other than that no i don't really worry about the disc grip spots um what, i got another question from mark hill just curious uh he's asking if you guys bag all the same color since i know you don't what do you guys think about people bagging all the same color mark says he personally is trying to bag all pink discs because he finds them easy <laughs> i got a good story about having so the same I. disc color <laughs> um so mark asked if we bag discs that are all the same color or if we have a color preference on disc he said he's trying to go all pink um we don't really bag we're all all over the place i do avoid certain colors yep. um but i really like the swirly grays from dynamic so even though those are dark i still <laughs> bag a lot of those because they look pretty um so funny story in colorado um we were out playing a course and there's a shot it was like 275 foot hyzer and at the time i had an orange longbowman in my bag which flies kind of like a felon so i uh went to throw it on a hyzer threw a hyzer it popped up went really straight kind of turned a little bit and then sat down like a hundred like there's a building i was trying to hyzer over i ended up on the other side of the building I was like, that's really weird. It's never flipped on me before. We walk up there, and when I look down, and it's my Avenger SS. Oh, not my Boatman. They're both orange. And so, like, I couldn't imagine an entire bag of the same discs, because I would do that all the time. Right now, like, I've got a couple blues, but it's like a Maverick and a Justice, so, like, I would know that I grabbed the wrong disc. But, yeah, if everything was the same color, I'd, I'd grab the wrong disc all the time. My Color Glow Mortar and MD3 are pretty close in color right now. And as, like, I, I, you know, you just look. You look, you grab out the bag, put it in your hand, and it, it, it was going to be a mortar upshot. And I was like, whoa, that is not going to do what I needed to do. So uh, you just, when I would think, I don't want to have to think after I've already said, this is the disc. And so with, if I'm having to pull out, every third disc to try and find it. That just seems silly to me. Uh, I want to make my decision and go with it, but 
Uh, I think it's really cool to see you guys that throw only one color. The bags look rad, but uh, it's just yeah. a lot of work because sometimes the, sometimes, it's sometimes hard to that, find the weight and the disc you want in that color all the time. So it's just or like easier. the ones that come in that color are always really domey or really flat, and you're just like, well, I needed the opposite version. So just some of them preferences are going to make finding this a little tougher. That yeah, Fuji Tim Swift was known. Is that good in the headwind? It held up a bit, but not raging headwind. If if you've got less than, you definitely gonna need to put some hyzer yeah. on it. Um, and yeah, 15 and below. You're not throwing it as hard as you fine. can. And um, yeah, I definitely want. I, in an actual like stiff headwind, I definitely would step up to a verdict or something like that, yeah. or really stiff headwind at justice. Um, but it's it's not going to be bad in a headwind, but it's not going to be my first choice. We got a, just a com compliment to you guys. Uh, Ron Lesnar says, you guys are legends. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> we are celebrities in a very minor part of the universe. We have dozens of fans and hundreds of people know who dozens. we are. Dozens. <laughs> all right, um, anything else we need to get out of here? I'll, and if we missed your question, I try to go back and answer all of those later um, in the comments section, so I'll try to do that again. Um, again, thanks for tuning in for this. This is great. Episode 55 with the Latitude 64 Opto G 2K Fuji. Um, and we will see you guys next week with... Next week. Uh, what do we want to do next week, Steve? We, we could have them vote. Give us give, list like five or six. No one ever time. votes when we do yeah, that. Um, let's do the drift. I think that's a good the drift. That's a good transition. I, I, I like that. All right, we'll next see you guys week. next week. Thanks, guys. <laughs>